At that time, Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. And when once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. And then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, from today's Gospel reading, I bring before you two scriptural verses for our reflection. Jesus said, Enter by the narrow door. And Jesus also said, Some who are last will be first, and some are first who will be last. Well, let's take this for our reflection. And when we reflect on this, those who are first now will be last, and those who are last now will be first. But it seems like those who are first, they continue to remain as first, and those who are last, they continue to remain last. And the question arises, What's the point in entering by the narrow door? What's the point really, my dear brothers and sisters? What do you think? Well, when we reflect on this question as well, I would like to take your attention to a minor prophet, Prophet Habakkuk. You might have heard about him. He is known for his popular words, even though the fig does not blossom. And even though, even though the olive crop fails, or even though the, the flocks stand empty of cattle, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. I will make sure my happiness is in the Lord. These are the words from, from Prophet Habakkuk. And he has his own set of arguments before he uttered these words in the book of Habakkuk. He had a set of, set of arguments. He complained or he argued with God, Lord, what's the point in entering through the narrow door? I see people taking shortcuts. I see people entering through the wider door and they seem to prosper. And at the same time, I see the righteous people, they don't seem to prosper. So what's the point in entering through the narrow door? He has a long argument and he has a set of complaints to present before the Lord. And the Lord listens to him patiently. And at the end, the Lord says, come with me. I will make, I will make you come to the heights. Or I will enable you, enable your feet like that of the deer. And I will help you to walk on the heights. And come with me and look at the same situation, look at the same problem from a divine perspective. Look at the same problem from my, to, through the lens of my eyes and try to understand it. See, you might feel like, okay, those who are first now, they continue to remain first. And those who take shortcuts and those who enter through the wider door, they seem to prosper. 
But at the end, what are they going to receive? You just look at it from my perspective. And this is how uh, Lord takes Prophet Habakkuk through a different understanding altogether. Well, dear friends, we in our life situations, we look for immediate results, immediate gratifications. But at times it doesn't really come to us. And we, we might get disappointed and we might get the same question. What's the point in entering through the narrow door? And we all of us know about the story of Cinderella, where we, we actually like the, the climax part of it, where there is a miracle element happening and the whole life situation altogether for Cinderella changing suddenly. Well, we keep expecting miracles. We keep expecting immediate gratifications and we also receive disappointments in life. But the Lord says, come with me and have a different perspective. Don't worry even if those who are first, if they come, continue to remain first. And those who are last, if they continue to remain last. You be true to your conscience. You live your life according to your conscience and you be happy with it. And the Lord will reward you in his own time. So there is no need to ask the question, what's the point in entering through the narrow door? Well, you might say, Father, it's very easy to say that. But we face real life situations in a very tough manner. And we, we keep asking this question. We do ask the question. Well, the Lord, this Lord in a way strengthens us. The, the greatest blessing that he gives to us in moments of uh, suffering in moments of difficulties is the strength that we receive from him to go through that, to go through the narrow door. We do not expect miracles from our Lord so that we are immediately out of the problem, but we expect the strength that we need to go through the problem. That is the greatest blessing that the Lord promises to us. Well, dear friends, let us pray during this Eucharist to receive that divine perspective which the prophet gracefully received from the Lord, so that we also might say, the Lord will make me walk on the heights. He will make my feet or he will enable my feet like that of the deer. And I may have a divine perspective to understand life situations so that my mindset, my perspective will be different. Let that be our prayer. Now the question still remains with us. What's the point in, in entering through the narrow or entering by the narrow door. What's the point in that? Well, we can say Jesus is the point. Jesus is the reason to enter through the narrow door for us. Let us be thankful to God for receiving this perspective through the readings today and strengthening us with the words from Prophet Habakkuk. And let us also gratefully say to God, Lord, I will rejoice in you. We will rejoice in you, even though the fig tree does not blossom, or even though the cattle may stand empty. I will, we will greatly rejoice in you. Let that be our thanksgiving prayer too. And may the Lord strengthen us in our moments of difficulties. Amen.